All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ryan Childs, and I am a technical sales specialist with the Part Super Center. I um, want to thank you all for taking the time this afternoon on a Friday uh, to join our little webinar here. Uh, I'm going to go over a quick agenda uh, for the webinar. Um, I'm going to start off talking a little bit about some very basic information about transformers, kind of what they are, where you find them, some common terminology that you're going to hear if you're dealing with the transformer world. It may be uh, some things that you already know, but if there's anybody that's joining us that's maybe new to the power delivery industry or don't have as much experience with transformers, there might be some things in there that'll be good uh, for you to take a look at. Um, and then we'll take a look at the part super centers uh, offering kind of how we support the transformer world specifically in the uh, legacy and mature GE products. To kind of give you an overview, Part Super Center started its life as uh, a GE entity. We were part of uh, GE Parts as uh, Part Super Center. And about 15 years ago, they spun us off to a third party. And during that time, we were able to negotiate um, custodianship of a lot of the intellectual property for some of the stuff that GE had either already obsoleted or was in the process of obsoleting. Um, everything from circuit breakers and transformers to drive and controls, um, a little bit of everything in the mix. So um, with that, we will go ahead and get started. I want to give a couple housekeeping uh, things. There should You should notice on the right-hand side of your screen, there's a place to um, type in some questions. If you have questions that come up during the presentation, I'll stop intermittently and, and check and see if there's anybody that has questions. Um, and uh, one of my colleagues here will be able to relate them to me uh, to get them answered for you. I also want to let everyone know that we are going to go ahead and record the webinar for training purposes later. Uh, so just to make you aware of that. So having said that, let's go ahead and get started. So what is a transformer? And you know, as you can see here, I'm not talking about Bumblebee or Optimus Prime, but the electrical transformers are a device that is used to transfer energy between two or more circuits, uh, generally changing voltage and current. You're going to have two different types. You're going to have a step up or a step down transformer. A step up transformer obviously takes um, voltages from a lower voltage and generates a higher voltage on the output side, a step down transformer does the opposite where you have a higher voltage coming into the transformer and a lower voltage coming out on the on the secondary side. The basic way that transformers have been built and the meat and potatoes of them really hasn't changed uh, in over 100 years. They're still going to contain a um, metal coil, usually is going to be aluminum or copper wrapped around a, a, a metal core. Um, when you energize the primary uh, coil, that's going to create a magnetic field that induces a charge in a current on the secondary side. Um, the step up, step down transformers, um, you achieve this by having a different uh, turn ratio in the coil. So on, let's say, a step up transformer where the uh, lower voltage is on the input side and the higher voltage is on the output side, imagine you know, your core is going to say is going to be uh, you know a square of metal, and on two sides you have the left side is the input side, and the right side is the output side. The input side is going to have coil wrapped around the metal core, and it's going to be wrapped around less uh, a less number of turns, a less number of lines around than the output side, um, and that's kind of how the um, the ratio of those two is is what drives the change in the current. So what do we use transformers for? Um, the simple answer is because different people have different electrical needs. Uh, your house is generally going to run 120 volts coming into the outlets that you plug your lights and your TV and every, everything else into. A lot of commercial applications generally run 277 volts. But you do have really large industrial customers that have uh, equipment that needs uh, 1,000 volts as, and higher, as high as 10 or 13,000 volts in order to run you know, large pieces of equipment. Um, so there's different needs, and you can't give everybody the same level of electricity because different equipment needs uh, different amounts of it. 
The other reason why we use transformers is that because electricity travels better at a higher voltage. Um, when you have a higher voltage, um, the electrons, uh, because of the way they move around, it generates heat. And anytime you generate heat, that um, leads to a loss of, uh, of energy. There is just excess energy electricity that gets used up during the transmission. So if you have a higher, uh, a higher voltage, you have less loss um, down the end of the lines. So it allows for uh, companies to send it over greater distances and still have a usable level when they get to the end destination. Um, for utility companies and transmission companies, it also allows them to use a smaller wire, which helps save them with cost um, and maintenance and, and utilities. One of the common terms you're going to hear when dealing with transformers is a volt ampere, and you're generally going to hear it as a kilovolt ampere or maybe a millivolt ampere. Um, electricity uses the metric system, so you're going to see this as a KVA or an MVA more frequently. The volt ampere is um, a unit of power that we use and is basically an equivalent to wattage, which is you know, a measurement of real power. So when you're thinking of you know, wattages of a light bulb is where you would commonly see that. The reason why we don't use wattage in uh, dealing with transformers is because in order to understand the wattage, you have to know the power factor. Um, and in a lot of times in uh, the situations, we just don't know the power factor in the systems that um, transformers are going to be installed in. So what the volt ampere rating tells us is it basically gives us an idea of the maximum voltage and current that the transformer can handle um, without uh, risking any damage due to heat. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, anytime you use electricity and induce that electromagnetic um, field or current, heat is going to be produced and a lot of it. So transformers generate a lot of heat, but they really don't react well to, uh, to high temperatures. And um, most of the time when you have a failure in a transformer, it's generally going to be because of some kind of heat related incident. All right, transformers are found pretty much throughout the entire energy grid, all the way from the generation stations, and this includes, you know, your traditional coal, uh, natural gas, um, you know, fire generators, some of the newer applications, nuclear, solar, uh, wind, water, all generating stations are going to have transformers of some kind because they are going to need to um, from the from the level that they generate the electricity at, they would use a step up transformer in order to send it into that high voltage and get it ready for transmission. Um, so the different points of the power grid, you have generation, you have transmission, which everyone's familiar with the really big electrical lines you see out in the middle of nowhere that distribute um, the electricity from the power generation into more urban and populated areas. Um, and from there, you would send it into a distribution or a secondary distribution substation. Um, and it's going to take all of that high, uh, the really high voltage that is going through the transmission lines and step it down to a more usable, um, a more usable level. Usually at this point, you might have some of the larger industrial customers um, that will have a, you know, a secondary distribution unit or a substation distribution unit. Uh, maybe on on their campus um, because they are going to be taking that transmission voltage and stepping it down into maybe that 10 to 13,000 volt range that some big heavy equipment is working on. Um, you would also have utilities that would have these that will then take it down, you know, from the higher transmission voltage into a lower voltage and then send it further down the line into your commercial and industrial end user uh, categories. So a lot of the ones that you're going to find here are going to be the pole mounted units that you see driving around the neighborhood on the telephone poles, maybe the, the green three pole, um, uh, I'm sorry, the green three phase transformers that you see sitting outside the shopping centers that have the doors that swing open, that little green box that might be sitting in your backyard in your neighborhood. Um, all of those are going to be in the lower end, uh, kind of the end user distribution market as well. So that was kind of a, a pretty quick overview of some common terminology and where you might find some transformers. Um, does anybody have any questions from that?
Okay. Doesn't look like it. All right, so I'm going to go into now um, what I like to call the lineup. So as I mentioned before, Part Super Center is pretty uniquely uh, positioned to support your mature and legacy GE products. Um, as part of the spinoff from GE, as I mentioned before, we were able to uh, negotiate uh, custodianship of uh, a lot of the original uh, drawings and documents, designs, the intellectual property, um, and we not only maintain those uh, oftentimes in the factories that GE built these products in, um, but we can also offer that uh, that OEM product for you still. Uh, so the thing about a part super center part is um, it's going to be made to GE spec. It's going to be made using GE's original design drawings. It's just not going to say GE on it, on it anymore. So starting off, we're going to look at the Pittsfield transformers. The Pittsfield, Massachusetts plant is the birthplace of all GE transformers. At one point, um, GE made pretty much every type of transformer in this factory. Um, you can see it operated from 1903 until they closed the plant in 1987. And during the heyday in the 1950s and 60s, the town of Pittsfield um, was employed about 20% at the uh, GE facility. There were um, about 50,000 people in Pittsfield during that time, and 10,000 of them collected a paycheck from the GE factory. Um, later on in its life, the Pittsfield uh, factory focused more on the larger power transformers, the 15 to 700 MVA units, and you're going to find these ones in the generating substations and transmission substations. So most of them are going to be with um, uh, power plants or power utility companies, and their job is going to be to send the you know, voltage into that really high range to be able to distribute it over those long lines. As I mentioned before, since we have custodianship of all these drawings, we can get information on transformers dating back to the early 1900s. I think the oldest one I remember seeing was um, from the 1920s. There was a gauge that a customer was looking for and we were able to provide it because we could tell them you know, what it was and find a suitable replacement for it. Um, if you're needing help on uh, units of this type, all we need is the serial number off the unit and a description of the part, or if you've got pictures of the part you're looking for, um, send that on over to us and we can get you an exact replica, or if it's not available and there's an alternate, we'll be able to inform you what the differences are, if there's any changes that are needed um, in the installation or operation of it, and be able to help support from that end as well. ProLEC uh, is a joint venture with GE, um, and this is a still a current offering that GE is giving. Um, this is basically the this is basically the um, hereditary uh, successor of Pittsfield. Um, they make the same size units, and you're going to find them mostly in the generating substation and transmission. Um, I like the picture of this one because you can see in the bottom left corner there's a gentleman standing there. Um, and I like to assume he's about my height, so let's say he's six foot, and that just really gives you a kind of a scale of how big some of these transformers can really get. Um, with Prolec, the Part Super Center used to be their um, uh, exclusive distributor for North America, so we have a long history of, of supplying and supporting Prolec parts, um, and because of this, we actually have a pretty good internal database of what parts are used on their transformers uh, so we can help not only identify the parts um, but also be able to provide them um, because in most cases the suppliers that Prolic uses are also suppliers that we may be using um, for our own transformers and and uh, we're able to purchase directly from them so it'll help you save some some time and money on those Again, as with most transformers, everything's going to be driven by the serial number. That's going to lead us to drawing lists and the and the designs, and we'll be able to pull anything from that. So um, get us a copy of the serial number. If you can get a photo with a nameplate, that's great. Let us know what parts you're looking for, and we can uh, help and support in that way. The Rome transformers uh, were manufactured in Rome, Georgia. And these are going to be the distribution um, size units, so uh, 112 kVA to 25 MVA, so the medium-sized range. 
we can support um, uh, parts as well as replacement units. We actually, Part Super Center employs um, three employees who actually sit in the Rome uh, factory. They're, they're located there, so they have access to all the drawings and can pull all that information. Um, and two of them were actually uh, employed at the Rome factory um, when it was live and operating. So um, there's a wealth of information and knowledge that they have to share with us, as well as the, the parts and drawings. Um, so again, serial number from the nameplate will get us what we need and the description of the parts you're looking for. As well as the parts and pieces of it, we can also offer complete replacements of these Rome units. Um, the thing that really uh, is beneficial with a replacement from Part Super Center is that anybody else can match the exterior um, dimensions, you know, the height, the width, the length uh, of the transformer. But if you're in a situation where, let's say, one of these um, might be linked up to the end of a line of switchgear, um, you know, in, in, in a building for you, um, you know, anybody else might be able to give you the, you know, the the dimensions, uh, the exterior dimensions that'll fit in that space. But what they don't know is where all those low voltage connections are that are going to hook up to the bus work on that switch gear. Since we have all of GE's original designs and drawings, we can instruct the factory to build those connections so that it's literally just you pull the old one out and you plug the new one in and you connect it up. So your downtime is going to be a lot less. It's going to be a lot less labor required to hook it up and you're not going to need any other additional um, you know you're not going to need to, to create some new flex connect or anything else to try and get that low voltage to connect up to the existing bus work um, again everything is made based on GE's original engineering and manufactured information and it's going to meet the the critical dimensions and all the electrical connections so that's a real big benefit um, of not having as much downtime and, and less installation costs Pad mount transformers. Um, these are going to be at, at one point, depending on their age, they were manufactured either in Pittsfield um, or Hickory, North Carolina, before they were eventually moved to Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, you can kind of see the pictures here, the top one being the larger three phase. You're going to see those in a lot of the commercial settings. Like I said, you, you know, if you go to the mall, you might see one outside the department store. It's got the doors that swing open. The single phase units are going to be those green boxes that you see as the example here sitting in your backyard. Uh, we have an extensive record of these as well. So again, that serial number drives uh, everything that we're looking for. So if you can get us the, the serial number and a description of the parts you're looking for, whether it's bushings or gauges or you need a new door handle um, or anything like that, you can send that over to us and we can support. Network transformers. Um, these ones are really neat. They, uh, you're also going to hear, hear these referred to as submersibles um, because they are basically designed to operate underground. There's the vault type transformers. Um, those are going to be suitable for occasional um, operations submerged in water. And then the subway type, which you're going to find in a lot of uh, urban areas, big cities, and they're suitable basically to continuously be submerged in water if need be. Uh, a fun story about these, the city of New York obviously has a ton of these. Um, and as I mentioned before, transformers really generate a lot of heat and they don't react kindly to being overheated. So you can see in this picture here, this is installed in a concrete bunker underground. Um, it's going to be generating a lot of heat. And then as you can imagine, it gets pretty warm in New York City. Uh, in the middle of the summer, it can get up into the 100 degrees, and it's not uncommon during those days to avoid, you know, brownouts from overheating and transformer failures that the city of New York will ask the fire department to actually just roll by these and just dump some water into, into the vaults in order to keep them cooled off. These were manufactured by GE in the Pittsfield um, factory before they moved them to the Shreveport, uh, Louisiana factory. Shreveport is still uh, an operating GE factory. They still produce these there today. Um, but any of the older ones, if there are um, repairs that are needed on it, if there is you know, issues with the radiators or gauges or bushings, again, the uh, serial number will lead us to all the information that we need for that. 
Step voltage regulators. Um, this is a device that uh, is used to maintain a voltage um, within a certain acceptable limit. Generally, they're, they control it plus or minus 10%. Uh, and what this allows uh, or what this does is any fluctuation in um, in the voltage on the input side, it will uh, constantly give you the same voltage on the output. So if there's you know more of a draw, uh, if there's more of a load um, you know on the secondary side, generally what you would see is is a dip or a spike in the input voltage. and most transformers, um, that don't have some kind of voltage regulation on it. Um, it could affect the, you know, the the quality or the the consistency of the uh, current that is provided. Um, so, you know, you might see this uh, evident in, you know, lights flickering or um, equipment is kind of acting up because it's not getting the correct supply of electricity um, because of spikes or dips in voltage. Um, the letters highlighted in bold there are going to be the different vintages of voltage regulator that GE provided. So you might hear these referred to as an ML32 or a VR1 or a VML32, any kind of variation like that. Um, we'll kind of key you in that this is a, a voltage regulator. They're commonly used in the distribution grid. Um, a lot of, like I said, industrial customers with large voltage equipment might have some of these. If it's a little sensitive, they don't want, they want to make sure that they're continually getting the same voltage to that equipment so that it doesn't put undue stress on it. Um, we'll have these installed as well to kind of maintain that. Um, most of the parts manuals that are available for these or the instruction manuals will have a parts list in the back. The parts are referenced by an R number, so it's going to be an R. 2024 and R2033, and that all corresponds to a specific part. Um, but the thing to keep in mind is that that's just a reference number to kind of help identify what the part is. There are actually three or four different sized voltage regulators and switches that GE has produced over time. So um, depending on what size unit it is, the actual part number for these will change, but that reference number stays the same. So an R2030 is always going to be an R2030, but the actual part might be a little different depending on the, the age of the unit and the size of the unit. So that's why that serial number is important because it'll get us to the correct drawing list and the correct parts list for it. The inductral is a, another type of automatic voltage regulator, and this one um, is it basically operates the same as the step voltage regulator, but it really gives you a narrow percentage or narrow control over the output. So if you've got equipment that is very, very sensitive to fluctuations in, in electricity or the power level, um, you might see it installed um, you know, in, in link with these. Um, the two pictures here are great examples of this. These are two um, radar installations. The one on the left is uh, in the Marshall Islands, and the one on the right is um, in the Aleutian Islands in Alaska. And they're both, um, you know, checking for, um, uh, you know, lower orbit uh, satellite launches or rocket launches um, throughout most of the most of the world. So. Things like satellite dishes, uh, things that are incredibly sensitive to fluctuations in electricity where you have to make sure that the voltage is constant going to it. Um, the inductral is a great uh, offering from this. Because they're so fine tuned, um, we do offer spare parts on these as um, uh, as well, but you know, we really encourage unless you know your contractor or you really know what you're doing with them. We have an option to send it back to the factory that builds. Uh, we have a factory that builds new ones for us still, um, and we can send existing units back to them for evaluation and repair um, as well. So that's an option that you can take a look at too. The GE KA108 is a bushing potential device. Um, this is a really neat alternative to a potential transformer. Um, you're going to find these a lot in uh, utilities or power companies, and they're going to be used um, as a safer and more reliable and a little bit cheaper um, alternate for potential transformers to use for uh, metering and censoring. 
Um, with a potential transformer, you really have to mount the potential transformer very close to the actual bushing. And most of the time, these are 138 kV, 240 kV bushings. So you're dealing with a lot of electricity coming through them. Um, on top of the fact that those bushings are generally on top of a 15 foot tall transformer. So you have to mount the potential transformer um, up near that. So anytime that you need to work on that or test it or take a look at it, you've got to shut the unit down or you've got to send a guy 15 feet in the air to be underneath those bushings. Um, and the bushing potential device is a great alternative to that. Um, the box that controls it can be remote mounted uh, and you tap into the bushing through the through the tap uh, with a cable that can run anywhere from 10 to 55 feet. Uh, so you even have the potential of maybe taking the actual bushing potential device um, inside a neighboring building. Um, so you can have it inside and you don't have to be underneath the transformer while you're taking a look at it as well. Um, <clears throat> this is a part that, or this is an item that um, Part Super Center now maintains. So if you have uh, a need for these, um, you can reach out to us and uh, we can collect the information needed in order to give you a, a quote for it. All right, then I have what I like to call the odd couple. And these are the smaller KVA units, um, the ones that are really kind of kind of be, um, you know, more of the disposable type. If something goes wrong with it, there aren't really repairs that you make to it. You just kind of scrap it and you buy a new one because, um, you know, they're they're more of a commodity item. Usually the the model number is going to begin with a 9T. Um, they're going to be produced or nameplated from Fort Wayne, Indiana or Nogales, Mexico. Um, the, the key thing to remember about these is that a lot of these 9T models, if they were manufactured prior to 2016, which is going to be a majority of them, a lot of them probably don't meet the new um, Department of Energy regulations on efficiency with transformers of this size. So uh, that specific model number might not be available anymore but there will be one that uh, sh that we should be able to match up to a current offering that does meet um, the 2016 DOE regulations. Um, so on this uh, replacements of these, um, it's really important to get that nameplate because if that model number is not current or is, is does not meet those regulations, then the information on that nameplate is what's required in order to configure a, a new model on that. All right, that was kind of a lot of information to take a look at. Does anyone have any questions about the different types of GE equipment and kind of where they fall or how we support? Hi, Ryan. So we have three questions. The first question is, why is the serial number not enough? Uh, that, in, re in regards to, I mean, the serial number is, it's enough to get us to the drawing list or the parts list. Um, so I, I may have misspoke then, I guess, if uh, if that if that's how that was interpreted. But the the serial number is is pivotal. It's it's what drives um, all of the, it's what drives us to all of the the information that we need. OK, perfect. The second question is, does PSC also supply parts for underground oil filled cutouts that are used with submersible transformers? Um. That I am not 100% certain of. Uh, so if, if there are questions that I'm not able to answer at the very end of this, I'm going to have my contact information. Um, so if if you wouldn't mind, if there's a question that I don't have the answer to or I've got to look something up, go ahead and reach out to me um, at the email provided at the end here with that question so that I can um, adequately research or pull in my colleagues as needed and, and get you the correct answer there. Thank you, Ryan. And then the last question is, can PSC supply replacement control panels for GE pull top voltage regulators? Yes, we can provide the replacement controls. Um, a lot of the, with the voltage regulators, a lot of the old static controls, so like the SM2, SM3 controls are obsolete. Uh, so we would be looking at converting those to a newer digital model. 
um, but yes, we can we can work with uh, with the current suppliers that GE uses on their controls for the current models of regulators that are running off the off the line right now to get you an updated uh, control for that. Thank you, Ryan. That was the actually we have one more question. Mm -hmm. Oh, never mind. So we are good. Thanks, Ryan. OK. All right, so now we'll take a look at um, some of the parts and components that you're going to see more frequently uh, on transformers. Uh, gaskets is a really big one. Pretty much any time you open up a transformer uh, or do any kind of work on it, if you take any kind of part off of it, there's going to be a gasket associated with it, and it's a really good idea to have a replacement um, replacement gasket available. Um, and this goes for anything from bushings, gauges, handhold covers. Uh, like I said, anytime you open that transformer up and expose the insides to air, um, you're potentially uh, you're potentially opening up for uh, for problems later on. Um, most of these transformers are going to be sealed and filled with oil. Uh, and in those instances, anytime outside air gets in, it unbalances the the composition on the inside can cause excess heat, which can cause uh, damage. Um, also, uh, a leaky gasket or uh, you know a, ga a gasket that's uh, allowing moisture in will also um, make the the mixture of in the oil uh, can cause those same events. So, um, all of our gaskets are made to order again because we have all of the the drawings and the specs on them. Um, you know, you know that it's going to be an exact fit. It's not going to have to be cut in the field. Um, it'll be to the specification that that GE made for it. And we can give you, um, you know, the, the gaskets as needed or for the pit sealed and the room units. If you're interested, we'll just go ahead and give you uh, a complete gasket kit. So it'll be every gasket that GE suggested um, you have a spare of or identified as basically being a renewal part for it. Um, so we can quote that all as one part number because these Pittsfield units uh, specifically, sometimes you can get up into, you know, 50, 60, 70 different gaskets on it. Um, and rather than having to order that many different lines, you know, we can just quote that as as one as one unit. Um, again, that serial number is what drives everything for us so we can identify it that way. Bushings are another common uh, uh, part that you're going to need to replace on a transformer. Um, it's what allows the, uh, the the energy to pass through the tank of the transformer. Um, it's the insulator that uh, allows the voltage coming in from the input side on the electrical lines to get into the core and coil. Um, and then on the, on the secondary side to then leave the transformer uh, onto the, to the secondary lines. Uh, bushings are generally made out of porcelain. A lot of companies are now starting to move to a polymer material that has very similar um, electrical uh, characteristics uh, and protections. Uh, the main reason that this being is that porcelain is becoming increasingly difficult to obtain. Um, there are less and less suppliers throughout the world that want to produce porcelain because A, it's pretty expensive and it's also really bad for the environment. So it's very difficult um, in a lot of countries to be certified to produce porcelain um, with, with the various environmental agencies. Transformer fans and cooling. As I mentioned uh, a couple of times, transformers generate a lot of heat. So kind of like the HVA system at your house, you need to have a way to cool that system so that it doesn't damage and shorten the life of it. Um, we can offer uh, replacement units or uh, because we have the original designs and information, if you have a unit that doesn't have uh, fans on it, we can actually take a look at um, you know, what the increase in rating would be for adding additional cooling or additional fans to that. Um, 
you know, along with that, once that is the new rating is figured out, we can provide uh, the fans as well as a new nameplate so that it'll be accurately uh, reflected on the transformer. Um, you know, there's a lot of companies out there that can give you a fan. Um, you know, the one caveat I would say to that is that um, just because the fan has the same horsepower in the motor and the same fan blade size, it may not actually be moving the air uh, in the same way that an original GE fan was designed for. Um, I ran into a, a case just recently on a Pittsfield unit where uh, a customer had uh, replaced uh, a number of fans with an off-brand, you know, aftermarket part. And you could even just see looking at the fans that you knew something wasn't right. Uh, the original fans had, I think, five blades on them, and the new fans only had three on them. The blades weren't as big as the original ones, and the original ones had a, a tilt or a pitch to them um, in order to drive the air uh, a certain way that the, that the aftermarket ones did not. And the customer was concerned because the unit... Um, uh, the unit was was running hot. It wasn't operating uh, as efficiently as it should, um, and they were concerned, you know, that continuing that way would uh, cause issues with the with the unit. And it was simply because they didn't have the right kind of fan in there. Um, so that's you know, again, where we have all the original information there. We can make sure that what we're providing you is uh, to the same specification that GE had uh, and intended when they shipped that unit from the factory. Surge arresters uh, are another current GE product, um, but they're frequently used on a number of uh, electrical systems. You're also going to see these referred to or heard them referred to as lightning arresters, um, but don't let that fool you. These are not lightning rods. Um, if this gets struck by lightning, it will absolutely blow up. It's not meant to take a direct hit. Um, a surge arrestor or a lightning arrestor is actually meant to protect from an overvoltage transient event meaning there was a switching incident or maybe lightning struck, uh, you know, something or equipment farther down the line and basically sent a supercharged, you know, current down the line, which could potentially damage or cause a failure in, uh, a, you know, in your equipment, either a transformer or circuit breakers or any, you know, of, of some nature. The surge arrestor is basically the buffer that will absorb the brunt of that so that it doesn't send the you know the overcurrent into into your critical equipment. The part numbers are going to be uh, start with a uh, 9L, and there's a whole different slew uh, of categories there. But if you run across a 9L surge arrestor, um, that's something that we can help support. Um, if it's an old model number two, uh, we can go ahead and configure that into whatever the new nomenclature is. Uh, GE has changed their nomenclature on these a number of times. So depending on the age or, or vintage of the one you have, it might have been updated a few times. Um, but these are still pretty widely available and is, is something that PSC can support. All right, DGA monitoring um, is kind of the new trend in uh, transformers and the keeping up the life uh, of your equipment. DGA stands for dissolved gas analysis. Um, and the easiest way to think of this is it's basically kind of like drawing blood uh, at, your, at your physical with your doctor. Um, you know, prior to this, uh, or prior to the uh, inception of, of DGA monitoring, uh, you know, it's it's advisable that you take a look at the, you know, the contents of the oil in a transformer on a yearly basis, if not more frequently, um, to kind of get a good idea of the health of the unit. Um, and previously, what you would do would be take the oil sample or draw the oil sample and then send it off to a laboratory for uh, analysis, which can be time consuming, um, can be pretty costly. And, you know, you don't have a, a real time answer. And there's also, you know, if there's also a potential that there could be, you know, contamination in taking the sampling or shipping um, of nature, which can can lead to, you know, false results. So uh, GE and a number of companies now have monitors that you can install um, on any existing drain port. And there's varying levels of these that uh, or varying levels of these monitors. Some of them search, you know, for a single gas plus moisture. Some of them search for a whole multitude of gases. And depending on, you know, what the 
what the results are or what it's looking for, it can really tell you a lot about the health of your unit. So um, if you have a lot of um, uh, ethylene or acetylene in your oil, then that can tell you that you have um, some instances of isolated high, you know, high arcing um, that you need to take a look at. Uh, so depending on what your needs are, if you're not doing any kind of DGA monitoring, if you're, you know, still using oil sampling or you're not even doing oil sampling, um, these are a great option to take a look at because they kind of give you, you know, really good real-time information um, and a pulse on the health of your unit. Uh, and they're also, in a number of cases, you can tie them into, um, you know, third-party or GE-supplied software so that you can um, kind of track the history and get real-time um, monitoring on your on your units. All right, any questions from that part? So Ryan, I wanted to circle back to one of the questions that we did not know the answer to regarding the oil field cutouts. We do have those. So um, to the individual who asked that question, please feel free to contact us at sales at pscparts.com and we can try to figure that out for you. And yep, then we yeah. have one additional question and it is does GE also supply arrestor accessories like insulating spaces? I believe they have um, I believe they have a base. Uh, I think it depends on the uh, the specific unit, um, but I do believe they have something like that available. They also have uh, some surge counters and other accessories that are available for those as well. Thank you, Ryan. I think that was the last question that we had for that section. OK. All right, so the last section here, I just want to bring up um, a couple of the other non GE items. Uh, again, as I mentioned, Part Super Center uh, is pretty uniquely positioned to support the, the GE aftermarket um, for their mature and legacy equipment. Um, but there are another uh, a number of other uh, manufacturers for transformers and power delivery uh, specifically that you know just from our our time in the market and um, you know dealing with um, you know some of our suppliers and some of our manufacturers we've you know we've kind of get, gotten linked in with some other uh, some other you know transformer manufacturers that we can support as well to kind of make ourselves more of a, a one-stop shop for you um, the first being the GE now ABB SEPS. Um, this is going to be a group that's uh, headquartered in Plainville, Connecticut, and SEPS stands for the Strategic Equipment Packaging Services. As I mentioned, you know, on the nameplate, you're likely going to see uh, Plainville, Connecticut, GE Industrial Systems, GE Electrical Distribution and Control. Um, Despite having that GE nameplate, uh, GE factories didn't actually make these transformers. They were made by a third party, um, usually ABB or MGM or Vantran, Virginia Transformer, Prolec made a number of them. Um, and GE had them built by those third parties and then included the, the GE nameplate as part of this package. Um, we've got a pretty good list going from these serial numbers to be able to identify which factory made these. Um, so if you're looking for, you know, replacement parts, bushings or fans or things of that nature um, for these types of units, go ahead and send it over to us because uh, we can probably identify who the factory was that actually made it and reach out to them um, so that they can pull their records and make sure that you're getting the correct part. Uh, for replacement on these. ABB uh, is another big manufacturer right now. Um, they've got operations in uh, Jefferson City, South Boston, Virginia, Bland, Virginia. Alamo, Tennessee makes uh, their bushings and other components and uh, Crystal Springs, I believe, is in uh, Mississippi. Um, aside from the transformers, ABB is making a whole slew of parts as well. The tap changers and all the uh, components of those, controls and relays, bushings, fans, gauges, um, sudden pressure relay devices, dehydrating breathers, things of that nature. So if you've got an ABB bush or an ABB transformer and you need parts on that, um, you can reach out to us and we can support those as well. Likewise, Westinghouse Transformers. Um, Westinghouse uh, was 
bought out by ABB as far as the transformers go. Uh, so again, much like we hold the records for Rome and Pittsfield, the ABB factories now have um, the access for the Westinghouse uh, records as well. So if you've got an old Westinghouse unit and you want to keep it alive by replacing the bushings or some other components, um, we can support that as well. Uh, McGraw Edison and Cooper Power Transformers. Um, these are uh, actually uh, Pennsylvania transformer actually now sits in the factory that McGraw Edison um, used to to operate out of. McGraw Edison uh, was merged with Cooper Power in the 80s um, and then they sat in that factory before Pennsylvania or Pennsylvania transformer took over. Um, so pretty much any of those three, um, you know, we can we can support uh, renewal parts uh, for those transformers as well. Um, as well as uh, replacement units um, that are going to uh, match the original spec. And then the last thing here is uh, kind of comparable to the GE VR1 and ML32. Cooper also has a step voltage regulator. Um, you know, again, uh, you know, through our, our 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 years of dealing, uh, you know, with our our vendors and with dealing with Cooper to sometimes source parts for some of the older GE stuff that GE doesn't want to deal with anymore. Um, you know, we've gotten a pretty good relationship with them. So if you've got some old Cooper uh, voltage regulators and you're looking for spare parts like that indicator gauge or the the cord that connects the indicator dial to the control or bushings or parts of the switch itself. Um, go ahead and get us that serial number and reach out and we'll see what we can do to support you on that as well. All right, and with that, uh, that's all I have to uh, to present today. Does anybody have any questions from anything previous or from that last section that we just covered? So we have one additional question, Ryan. It's can you provide replacement transformer fan guards that meet the OSHA finger proof requirements? Yes, so um, I, I will expound on that. Everything, anything that we provide um, will be to GE's original spec, except where there needs to be any kind of update like that for OSHA regulation, or if you know there's a, some, some other kind of um, you know, some other kind of uh, driving force that requires an update. So yes, the fan guards we provide will be OSHA certified. Um, they'll still mount the same way. They will be the, you know, same size and they'll, they'll mount to the fan the same way, but it will, it will meet OSHA certification. All right, lastly then, um, I mentioned earlier, uh, here's the email for myself. If you have specific questions or if there's anything that uh, we can help you out with or you wanna take a look at, you can go ahead and send it my way. Um, for anything else that's you know not transformer related, I always tell people if it's old and it says GE on it, it's probably something that Parts Supercenter has their hand in. And at the very least, we can tell you what happened to it or where it went. Um, so if you've got any of that old mature legacy GE equipment, you can reach out uh, to the sales team at the phone number or the email um, shown on the screen there. If you have any specific requests to transformers, you can go ahead and send those over to me as well. My email's up on the screen um, and we look forward to uh, you know, doing anything we can to help support your equipment and, and keep it in the field as long as possible. Just one more note before we end the webinar, this webinar will be posted on our website and so we will share that with everyone who has attended today and it'll be in our blog section on the site. Great. All right, thank you everyone. I really appreciate uh, everyone's attendance on the Friday. Um, and I hope everyone has a, a great Easter holiday and everyone's staying safe and all your families are doing well.